Hello. Hi. I am getting ready to start my Periscope, so I just want to say hello to the people who are already in. And uh, <sighs> see a couple people that are joining, and I have watched a lot of Periscope, so I know that uh, I need to wait for a couple of minutes for some of the live people to show up. I see some of my friends. Hi, Gretchen. Hi, Liz. This is very exciting. Um, this always makes me feel like, um, gosh, what the heck was the show with the mirror at the end, the kids' show? And she would say at the end, I see, I see Tracy, I see Margaret, and I would always wait for my name to come up, and it didn't because my name hadn't hit big yet, but it was coming. Anyway, um, okay, so if you're just jumping on here because you're on Periscope and you have no idea what the heck this is, uh, my name is Jennifer Gonzalez. I have a website for teachers called Cult of Pedagogy, and um, I'm going to be talking about teaching-related things. So if teaching is not your thing, then you probably should find another Periscope because you're going to be bored. So here is, um, here's the deal. I... Uh, I get a lot of mail. I got a lot of email um, from readers, and almost all of them are teachers or they're interested in education in some way. And a lot of those people ask me for advice. And a lot of times, the more complicated the problem is, the longer it sits in my inbox and I just ignore it. And I feel terrible because I want to be able to help people and I just don't have enough time to type it all out. So I thought maybe I can start once a week, we'll see how it goes, but I can start once a week just picking one question and answering that. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to store them in um, on another site called Catch Me. And if you use Periscope a lot, you're probably familiar with this, but if you're not, it's called K-A-T-C-H dot M-E. And it basically serves as a, a storage bin for people's Periscopes. So um, I've got a page set up for those and I'm just going to start building a library of answers to readers questions and we'll just see how it goes. So here is the question that I decided to pick for tonight. I probably got this six weeks ago, but it was from a teacher and she said, I know that it's important for me to build relationships with my colleagues, um, but gosh, that looks weird. I think it might be because I'm holding the phone. This makes me very self-conscious. She said, I know I'm supposed to be building relationships with my colleagues, but I don't have time. I'm just, you know, always in the classroom with my students, and I'm really busy. And do you know of any ways to, you know, to build relationships with my colleagues when there's just no time? She said, I'm also pretty introverted. So how do I even do this? How do I even build relationships with other teachers? So I immediately had... A lot of ideas and that's the question I'm deciding I'm going to share so first I want to address the issue of introversion because I the longer I've learned about introversion the more I realize that that is definitely me I get uh, get a lot of energy from being alone <laughs> and um, so I always go toward you know places where I can be by myself and when I was a teacher I was definitely eating lunch by myself in my room just churning out the work as much as possible and so I understand that. I understand, you know, especially if you have a lot to do, you want to just keep going. And if being around people isn't all that comfortable for you anyway, then it's just a great excuse to avoid them. So my first piece of advice for somebody who is introverted but knows, you know, they really do need to be probably making some connections with their colleagues. And let me, hold on, let me stop myself first of all uh, to talk about the importance of that, of why is it important to establish relationships with your colleagues. That issue is probably, if I had to categorize all the stuff that I think, yes, thank you, the Marigold Post, the things that I think are the most important to being successful as a teacher, I would say being surrounded by positive people who lift you up and who set a great tone for your day is one of the most important things that you can do as a teacher. When I was in the classroom, I especially my second teaching position, I was really in a very toxic environment. And it made me curl up and, and stay within myself. There were a few people in the building that I got along with really great. And we would hang out and, and laugh and have a great time. But if they weren't around, I was gone. I was hanging out in my room. And, you know, when I look back on it now, I realize that what I did was I further alienated myself from 
the more toxic people. And I kind of labeled them in my head, you know, and I've got the label for them as walnut trees um, in the marigold post. But I, I think sometimes it's unfair. I think when you label somebody as a walnut tree, as a, as a toxically negative person, I think it's self-preserving to do that. You know, you, what you're doing is you're protecting yourself from being influenced by them and from letting them make you feel bad about yourself as a teacher. However, I think if you put, you know, a Sharpie on them with that label, you, you never have any opportunity to sort of grow in your relationship. Hey, Rochelle. So you never have an opportunity to grow in your relationship with those people. And really, some of the people who seem really toxic, they may just have become that way. Hi, Natalie. They may have just become toxic recently. You know, um, a lot of people, a lot of teachers, I think, who are super negative, they didn't start that way. They got that way from being around other negative teachers. So long story short, I think even with some of your more negative teachers, it's important to not completely avoid them because I think there's a lot of value in the relationships with them. And also with just other teachers. The, the more people in your building you feel comfortable with, the healthier you're going to sort of feel every day at school. Yes, everyone does have a little positive in them. And, and really, it's a gift that you can give. I think if I were to go back into the classroom full time now, I would make way more of an effort to get to know those negative teachers. Yes. Oh, Amanda, right now, she just said, I feel, you all can see that, I feel compliments help. Absolutely. This wasn't even going to be my topic, but you're right. Compliment, a genuine compliment to a person who's just a negative Nancy all the time. Whew. It can go a long way. I, I had a had a, one of these negative teachers, and I worked with one of her sons on a project. He sort of just like helped me in my room one day for something. This is one of her actual students, and or one of her actual kids, her, her actual biological son. And he just had the nicest manners, and he was just really friendly and helpful and just earnest. And I, thank you, I told her the next time I saw her, I said, you know, your son was just fantastic today. He he came in my room. He helped me move some furniture. He, you know, whatever. I just kind of gushed about him for a little while. And I said, I just think you did such a great job with him. And I just wanted you to know. Man, she and I were like this from that point forward. I didn't feel uncomfortable around her anymore. She was sweet to me. That was it. And the thing was, it wasn't like I was trying to butter her up and make something up for her. I just really did... I don't know. You're just right. Compliments definitely help. You never know what will be the key. So my point in all of this, I'm getting off topic a little bit, but it's really important. The relationships that you have with your colleagues are really, really important. So if you are an introverted person, one small step that you can make is to just say hi first. And this is such a, a tiny thing, but I am somebody who, if I'm walking past somebody in a hall, if they don't make eye contact with me, I am not going to say, hey, Dolores, I'm just not, I'm not going to ever go first, which is terrible and it's babyish. And I think a lot of people kind of feel that way. They kind of are like, eh, I don't want to be the first one to say hi. What if the person blows me off or whatever? So just doing that little bit, just saying hi first is a step. Going to the teacher's lounge and having lunch and sitting by somebody that you don't know very well and just saying, hey, how are you? Just starting the conversation, even if it's killing you to be that person to start it, just a little bit. Sometimes all you have to do is say, how have you been? And people will just go on and on and on. And they love to be listened to. So those little tiny, tiny baby steps can help so much. And they don't take a lot of time. Another small way that you can build relationships with your colleagues in little bits of time is to just ask them for help. Like if you're struggling with something and you just say, do you know, do you have anything that would help me with this issue or whatever it is? People love to be asked for help. They really do. They love, especially if it is a veteran teacher, they love to share their expertise. And what you're doing when you ask for help is you're showing that vulnerability that is necessary to start to connect with people and it just doesn't take that much time so yes and once you share your vulnerability then they will too and those barriers barriers will start to come down so anyway this doesn't take a whole lot of time but 
Oh, another thing, use social media. I mean, if you if you start at a new school and you've got a clean Facebook account or Instagram account or whatever, whatever your your social media of choice is, find the other teachers and 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 send them friend requests. I mean, it's just so simple and it's amazing to me sometimes how well I get to know somebody once I have uh, become just sort of like Facebook friends with them. Well, click yes on the friend request and you go and look and look at all their pictures and you can see that pictures of their kids and everything and it's just a super quick way to start to get to know them. Okay, however, I have got the wamboozle, big, big deal. This is a tool that I, that I, that I have personally used over the last year that has been hands down the most significant relationship builder of them all. And it is called Voxer and I am going to demonstrate how it works tonight. If you don't know what this is, and I feel like a broken record because I talk to people about it all the time. My sister lives in Thailand, and I keep trying to get her to use it because we can talk to each other like that. And she's just sort of like, yeah, whatever. But it is an app that is free, and you can put it on uh, an Android or a, an iPhone or an iPad or an iPod. It's just an app, free app. And it works like a walkie-talkie. So you press a button, and you talk, and then the other person talks back. And it's... It's almost like voicemail, but way easier. And here's one of my Voxer friends just got on. Perfect. So since I started uh, using Voxer, I have been invited into Voxer chats with other people. You can be in a chat with dozens of other people um, all around a, same, a similar topic. Okay, so I've been in one that was started by a guy named Brian Stabnick, and he has a podcast like I do. It's called Talks with Teachers, and he's a wonderful person, and he has just kind of like pulled together people a little at a time who have shared interests and who have such a passion for teaching, and we've literally been having a conversation for, I've been in it for about 16 months now, <laughs> and we've gone through like a full school year, wished each other happy summer, started the new school year, and we just kind of keep up with each other's lives and we get into all these great conversations and we're constantly talking about why aren't more people using these because like if again if I was in the classroom right now it would be such a great tool for connecting with other people sort of like in, in my in my middle school I was on a team with four other people grade level one math teacher you know one science teacher and we would have meetings if we just had a Voxer group we would be able to talk all the time. I could get on after school in my car, press a button, and start talking and say, I had a real big issue today with Damon. Here's what he did. And I could tell everybody the story. It's a totally private little network, and I can talk all I want to. And then they can immediately, whenever they see the message, they can listen to it and answer it. Or they can listen to it in three days if they want to. It doesn't have to be immediate. And then they can talk back. And you get to know each other so much better because it's your voices. There's something about that vulnerability in another person's voice that really, Gretchen, thank you. Gretchen um, Schultek, just, she just posted a, a link to, uh, it looks like a do's and don'ts for Voxer, the blog post that she may have written, because there's, there's some, uh, some etiquette, I think, that we've started to develop over time. I want to show you how it works, because what I would love for you to do, if you've not tried this before, or maybe somebody kind of made you put it on your phone, but then you've never really done anything with it, is find one other person that you work with. Or even if you don't work with anybody that you really want to talk to, maybe it's somebody that you student taught with. Or maybe it is somebody who is a teacher that you know, but they live across the country. Get them on Voxer, get each other's usernames, open up a chat, and just start talking. And you will probably get addicted. I'm in so many Voxer chats, I can't keep up with them anymore. And so the first thing that I say when I get on a Voxer chat is always, I'm so sorry, <laughs> I haven't been in here for so long. Um, okay, I'm going to turn my phone around. I want to show you what this looks like, and I think I double tap to do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can somebody tell me how to turn my phone around, please? Oh, wow, the veins are really rocking tonight. I'm going to double tap again and see if that works. Swipe down, double tap to flip camera. I am. Okay. Sorry, that's a whiny moment. Okay, so what I'm looking at right now is sort of like my inbox, okay? And these are a bunch of different, and I apologize if you all are looking at your own names, if um, some of my friends just happen to be the most recent person who talks. So this is the Talks with Teachers um, thing, and it looks like I have 246 outstanding messages, which I don't because I've got this loaded onto my daughter's iPad right now. Okay, so, okay, here's a message from my friend Jay. I'm going to just play it for a second, even though he didn't give me permission, but this is just show you how it works. 
watching the uh, CNN Democratic uh, town hall. Okay. Oh, okay, here's Michael. Michael's actually in our Periscope, and he's talking, so I'm going to play his. This is great. I love seeing you on Periscope. <laughs> Jennifer, you're doing a great job. Thank you. I say, and now here's how I talk. I press this button. Michael, thank you so much. Thanks for jumping on so that we can demonstrate Voxer to people. I really appreciate it. And I press the button again. And now it's just this long string of you can type or talk. These are all different talking messages. And you just... Oh, and you know what? I, I This book has... You can leave as many messages. We're probably talking all about books there. So, okay, double tap again. No. Double tap. <laughs> All right, you can just keep looking up. Hey, Jory. See, there's there's Jory. And, and when a person is actually live talking, then it lights up green. But once they're done, it's just saved as a message. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm enjoying this talk too, Jennifer. This is very, very informative. And thank you for all the good ideas. So here's the cool thing. Jory's in California. Michael is in New Jersey. Jay is in Minnesota. I'm in Kentucky. That's me. And we talk all across the country with each other all the time. And it's just fantastic. I'm double tapping on my screen like crazy. I don't know if this is an Android problem. Okay. <laughs> I may have to just like turn the phone around and do the rest of it. Oh. Hey, there we go. Yay. All right. That is Voxer. Okay. Really seriously, give it a try. Especially if you have a friend who's already using it, that would probably be the best way to use it because if you and somebody else has, have never used it before, you may both kind of get in the frame of mind where it's like, ah, I don't really feel like doing this or whatever. But here's my other piece of advice about using Voxer though. Talk. Some people get on Voxer and they just text and text and text. Sometimes I think it's because they are, hi Jason, I think it's because they are just so used to texting, but it's so much faster to talk and it's so much, I've been in some Voxer groups where people only type all the time. And I'm just like, forget it. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear you and get to know you better. So it's just really um, such a valuable tool. It's really, I don't use this term much, much, but it has been life-changing for me and for a lot of other people who I'm in chats with because, yes, it is great for commuting. I almost look forward to when I have a long drive because I know, okay, I'm going to get in the car. I'm going to open up one of these chats that has a lot of out or outstanding messages. All you do is press the the last one that you didn't listen to and it just keeps playing them in sequence you don't have to keep looking down at your phone and, and playing them so it's just really fantastic it's just a great great tool okay my very last tip for um building relationships with teachers if you don't have a lot of time is this go into each other's classrooms and i'm not talking about um during planning period not during their planning period but Try to set up informal observation times with them as much as you can. Um, I wrote a book this last year. Uh, it's called Hacking Education. And it's just got these 10 really great ideas, and I should have hung it up. But um, one of the hacks that we introduced to like help schools get better is called the pineapple chart. And the pineapple chart is this chart that teachers can put up in, in the um, staff room that lists all the class periods for the day and all of the, the days of the week. And teachers just write down some cool thing that they're doing that day, like we're dissecting frogs on Wednesday, third period. And it's an advertisement to say, hey, come in to my classroom. Anybody who wants to come in and watch what we're doing, come in and watch. And that open invitation is fantastic. It's just, it's... I feel like it's so bonding to watch another teacher with their students. They are all different people when they're with their students. And so, again, if you can invite other teachers to come in and just hang out, you can say, Avon, just come, come grade papers in the back of my room or something. It really creates a bond between you, and you don't have to add any extra time to your day to do that. So I'm going to stop for now because I feel like I want to end on a positive note and – it's probably going to take me 10 minutes to figure out how to turn this off. So I am going to shoot for around this time next week. I'll pick another question. And if, uh, if you and I are not familiar with each other, <laughs> go to my website. Uh, if you look at my username, it's Cult of Pedagogy. Just add a .com to that, and that is my website. And there's just a treasure trove of stuff for teachers in there. So uh, thank you all so much for coming. This is really cool, and thanks for all the hearts. And, um, yeah, I'll, maybe I'll see you next week. Thank you so much. <laughs> Stop broadcast. <laughs>
Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> no.